Hi everyone, my name is John Steen. I'm an energy healing practitioner in San Francisco. And recently I published a six part blog titled Healing My Inner Child's Fear of Abandonment. So I thought it a good idea to record the blog just in case you hadn't read it. Okay, here goes. In January of 2020, I made the difficult and painful decision to resign from my 33-year career with the federal government due to the ongoing retaliation I was experiencing from a discrimination lawsuit and from being a whistleblower. Towards the end, I was experiencing panic attacks, which I have never experienced before. This all started around September 30th, 2014, and throughout the five plus years of this case moving forward, I constantly ask myself, what is the spiritual reason this is all happening to me? I could never find an answer within, despite having work, been working on myself since my early 20s. I'd also been involved with numerous spiritual practices over the years as well, so I knew to ask myself this question. The answer finally did come to me at the end of January 2021, when I, had full, when I had a bit of a spiritual awakening. I had fully committed myself to my meditation practice and going deep into healing my core wound, which is fear of abandonment. That's when the insight came and it became very clear to me. This was the reason all the work drama occurred. The universe was nudging me, trying to get my attention. It became abundantly clear to me that my life needed my full attention. For about six months in 2020, 2021, I had been attending Keith Parker's energy healing circles on Inside Timer, which is an amazing free meditation app. I could feel I was changing and healing. It was during this time I made the decision to study energy healing with Keith at Feel Dynamics Healing. Not fully knowing much about energy healing, I kept open the possibility of actually becoming an energy healing practitioner, but I was mainly looking for what attracted to me their training in the first place and the two statements on their websites, heal emotional imbalance and trauma and support your self-realization. About a year into my journey of self-exploration and realization, I realized all my relationships also needed my attention and care too despite me naively thinking the opposite. Most grateful for trusting my intuition and not returning to looking for new work, I fully, fully committed myself these past two plus years to this ensuing journey. Of course, there's a lot that happened in between those two years, but that will hopefully be other blog posts. I wanna jump to December of 2022, when the biggest and most profound healing of my life occurred. I woke up one morning in late November and was confronted with the fact that it was time to deal with my feelings about a friendship of many years. A friendship that felt very one-sided on my part for a very long time. It took the next, I took the next four days to ponder these feelings and most of that time obsessively, obsessively thinking about it. Do I end this friendship or not? This is a person I had a falling out with 20 years earlier, and he had reached out to me 10 years prior and we reunited, but reuniting without ever dealing with the prior fallout. After those four days of obsessive thinking, I decided it was best for me to end this friendship. I was feeling completely exhausted from having one-sided relationships with friends. I gave and gave and gave and received very little back. My overwhelmed feeling was that all my friends knew what I was dealing with in regards to my job, the lawsuits and the toll it was taking on me both physically and emotionally. I had also had to confront the fact that after I quit my job, many friends had not asked me once, how are you doing, John? From my perspective, there was no empathy or compassion or just plain caring. It didn't feel good to me. It was time for me to confront those feelings and why I felt this way. I also realized I needed to confront my people-pleasing behavior too, which can also be very draining and debilitating. To make a long story short, I contacted my friend and we had a very nice, honest conversation. I had expressed my feelings of our friendship feeling one-sided and everything always felt like it was all about him. It felt like there was no care about me or anyone else. We had agreed to keep things open and see where it goes. 
However, I woke, I woke the next morning feeling uneasy with a pain in my gut and in my throat. My third and fifth chakras were speaking to me and my body. Despite our talk, I realized I really didn't want to continue the friendship any longer. Not allowing my fears to overwhelm me, I immediately contacted him to end the friendship. Since that time, I've had zero regrets in doing so. During that time, one of my best friends was emailing and texting asking if I was okay, as I was quiet on a group text thread with other close friends. I reached out informing him what had happened and my decisions with this friend whom he knew too. His response to me was, oh wow, I'm sorry to hear that. Stuff like that can really take a toll on you emotionally and physically. Let me know if you need to talk. I ended up deciding I felt good enough to keep the bi-weekly poker night I hosted, which was the next day. My friend always arrives to poker a few hours early and we get a chance to hang out. When he arrived, we started watching some TV and I recall him asking, are you going to tell everyone at what happened at poker tonight? I said yes, and the other friend was also a member. That was the extent of the conversation about it, which greatly surprised me. I recall feeling shocked over those few hours. Why wasn't one of my best friends wasn't asking me how I was doing or how I was feeling? We set everything up for poker and the two other friends arrived on time. One friend casually mentioned how he had had a hard, tiring week, and I exclaimed, tell me about it. He then mentioned he had received a text from the friend that I had ended, ended things with saying goodbye, etc. I was a con bit confused on the mode of communication that occurred with the other members of the poker group, as I was awaiting for that evening to inform them all. Not thinking this person would have already reached out to people which was perfectly fine, I just hadn't got there in my mind as of yet. I then asked my best friend had he also received a text and he stated yes. I Then I asked a new member of the group and he stated no, which wasn't surprising to me. I recall thinking to myself, why wouldn't my best friend mention he had received a text from this person when he came over to my home? And this behavior was out of the ordinary. And that gave me the feeling of shadiness and awe at the same time was exposing him. And they weren't close friends outside of my poker group, poker group or events I hosted where they were all together. 99% of the time, I was the one who hosted events or parties for everyone. And for some odd reason, they felt the need to inform me when they happened to text each other on rare occurrences. I ended up bearing my soul to everyone that evening, explaining what transpired with this friend and the tough, painful decision I made, how I was emotionally and physically exhausted in maintaining one-sided friendships, and how I could no longer do it anymore. In the months prior, I took a break from another close friend and also a member of the poker group. I had to also had to reinforce boundaries that were overstepped by another member who was not by, invited back to my home. So there was a lot going on for me and I felt the need to express that to everyone. How my ongoing healing and awakening journey was forcing me to make life changes, how I needed to confront a lot of issues since quitting my job and the pain that en entailed. It felt good to me to be this vulnerable with everyone. In early evening the next day, my best friend started texting me as he decided he wanted to redo our poker rules. After we did that, his texting was about a TV show we both enjoy. For me, his texting felt incessant and it also felt like he was trying to gauge how I was feeling to see if I was angry because of him not telling me about the text. Again, I felt shocked and confused why he wasn't asking me how I was feeling nor did he mention his feelings about the previous evening. This too was out of the ordinary. Two days later, I received an email from him with the redone poker rules stating, and stating, we'll start the new year off fresh and new. Again, not asking how I was doing. This did not sit well with me. I also had this overwhelming feeling I was about to receive a gut punch. I needed to speak up for myself and express my feelings. I then began an email exchange with la which lasted most of the day. 
During that exchange, I stated, I am completely calm, just as calm as I was Friday evening, that this isn't about you, this is about me, which I said numerous times. I understood and emphasized how he was feeling as well, which was, I was coming for him, which I wasn't. I explained I had some questions and I could only do this a little at a time because I was on edge. I felt I really explained my emotions pretty well. There was some empathy and compassion on his side too, but our conversation took a turn where it became all about him. He also became cruel with his words and started twisting mine. He stated numerous times, I feel sick. That felt odd to me. His final words were, I can't do this anymore. I feel sick. I need time. I wish you the best. Honestly, I do. The last statement had a finality feel to it for me. And the next morning I was explaining to a fellow energy healing colleague how I was feeling and what had just transpired. I was not feeling good. I felt shell-shocked. My colleague was so great holding space for me and was guiding me to get into a receiving mode. As a people pleaser, that can be hard for me at times, but it is something I'm able to do. He gave me a list of suggestions like writing in my journal, massage, baths, etc. Since the pandemic, I was started hiking every morning and decided an afternoon hike would be good for me. As a Taurus, I find healing in nature a lot. I had recently created a pink favorite playlist and I decided to listen to that on my hike. As I hiked around the park, I started singing out loud, which I enjoy doing. I was very aware of all the life and nature around me. I got to a favorite spot with a gorgeous view of the Golden Gate Bridge. I then began feeling a recent familiar feeling of being alone after all I do for people, my, which is my people pleasing, some friends moving away, friendships ending, etc. And I started to cry as I was feeling those feelings, which felt good and needed. Then the song I love titled Circle Game came on. Singing along while intently listened to the lyrics, it was all about her father. I then realized I had forgotten my father's 11 year death anniversary, anniversary, which was the day before when all the drama was happening with my friend. I then began to sob, thinking about my father and the fraught relationship we had. He was very homophobic and very hateful to me at times, and was the very first bully I encountered as a young boy. I had always known my issues with my dad probably contributed to some of my abandonment issues, but I kept those feelings neatly tucked away for many, many years, much deeper than I had realized. For over 30 minutes, I repeatedly listened to that song, sobbing uncontrollably, feeling all the feelings. I knew this was good for me to be doing and that this was what I needed to do. I decided it was time to come home and upon arriving at home, I still felt this immense heaviness. I decided to take my friend's suggestion and take a bath, something I rarely ever do. I continued to listen to the pink playlist, crying off and on, once I finished with the bath, I sat on the couch and was still feeling this immense heaviness. I was a bit shocked at this feeling of heaviness as I was in that ugly snot running cry for quite a while. Like, What is all this heaviness? I decided to start writing in my journal, which I turned into a letter to my dad. Crying the entire time, I wrote page after page after page expressing all my feelings out on that paper expressing the ways I felt bullied and hurt by him as a young boy, the cruel things he said to me when I came out to him at age 22. His homophobia is actually an interesting story. There are signs that he may have been a latent homosexual, but also I was expressing some of the wonderful things that he did and some of the fond memories that have stayed with me too. I was sort of remembering those events from a chronological age point of view, I got to age 14, the year my parents divorced. My father had filed a full custody suit because my mother was a raging alcoholic. I recall the time my mother sat us down and asked us in that 
familiar mother angry tone. Who do you want to live with? I have a younger sister and brother. I remember reluctantly saying, I, I, saying to her, you. What I really wanted was to live with my father. I wanted my dad to rescue me from this nightmare that I was living. But I was too afraid of my mother and I didn't dare express my true feelings. I don't recall if my dad was there at that time, but I don't believe that he was. It was then I started to sob like I have never sobbed in my life. I put down the journal for a bit and I started choking. I was doubled over in pain, holding my gut as I sobbed, which ensued for about 30 minutes. Finally, here I am, feeling those deep, deep feelings of abandonment that lay within me. It was my 14-year-old inner child. It was such deep guttural pain I was feeling for him. Nothing like I had ever felt in my entire life. Once the sobbing subsided a bit, I finished the letter to my dad. That was the heaviness I was feeling. Those were the energy blocks that needed to be, be released within my body and my energy field. This was the emotional pain and trauma I had stuffed down deep inside me and have unconsciously carried with me since I was 14 years old. Connecting to my 14 year old inner child was exactly what I needed to do. I had always been aware of this family episode, but it never occurred to me that this is most likely where my feeling of, if I tell you how I really feel, you'll leave me, originates. Of course, being raised in a stereotypical alcoholic family, I was never taught to handle or process any emotions whatsoever. Sadly, I don't think most families teach children how to do this for themselves. You didn't get to have a chance to say, you, you didn't get to have to, uh, you didn't get a, have a voice in my family. Through my ensuing studies, I've also realized that there is most likely generational pain and trauma as well, which, one, which runs very deep. Alcoholism runs in both sides of my family. Once I was done crying and I finished the letter, I took really good care of myself that evening and anticipated I would sleep like a baby that evening. But alas, I did not, which greatly surprised me. It actually took me about a good week for my body to fully recover from this emotional episode. What started happening that evening, I started receiving insightful downloads. These downloads occurred for a few days as well. I realized every single male friend in my life was emotionally unavailable to me. How I most likely unconsciously set that up for myself. My father was also completely unemotion emotionally unavailable to me his entire life. And I believe it was an unconscious way for me to heal my relationship with my father. I also began to realize a common thread in my life. Out of a feeling for safety and security, which I longed for, I unconsciously allowed myself to feel stifled within my, media, um, within my immediate circle of friends. This feeling of safety allowed me to become stagnant, especially around any spiritual growth or self-growth. And this has nothing to do with them. I made my choices. But what it does, that allows me a way to absolve myself of any anger or resentments I was feeling towards these friends for the ways I feel like they treated me. It also allowed me the freedom from falling into the victim mode which is a familiar feeling and way of coping for me, if that makes any sense. It's not to say my feelings of anger or resentment are invalid. Those two are real and I don't deny myself those feelings when they arise. Feeling those feelings is part of a grieving process as well, which is normal when events like this occur. It's an opportunity to really go easy on myself, practice self-care and self-love in ways I have not done for myself in the past. I, I recall Dr. Megan Kirk Chang from, Chang from Inside Timer saying, grief done well is a two-year process. But what is grief done well? 
Thus far, it's been not denying myself those feelings when they arise, to sit with them and let them pass. Starting my blog and writing about these events is also a way of healing grief. It helps get more of that energy out of my body and my energy field. Over time, I hope sharing this vulnerability will be a be very cathartic experience for me. Now, the next day, I decided to take the letter I had written to my father and create a shamanic ritual in the park. I hike every morning. During the hike, I gathered, gathered some earth elements, wood, leaf, flower, and some rocks. While listening to uplifting music, I went to my favorite spot, dug a hole where I burned and buried the letter into Mother Earth. I brought along my Palo Santo stick to cleanse myself, the letter, and the hole in the ground. I said a prayer and lit the letter on fire. As it burned, I prayed for those feelings of anger and resentment and of course the overwhelming feelings of abandonment to be released from within me. Once it burned, I covered the hole and used more earth elements like air and water to send all those feelings into Mother Earth. And once I was done, I said a loving prayer for my dad. I then played some dance music I loved and love and stayed a few moments longer to fully feel what was happening. When I decided to leave, I danced and sang my way out of the park, feeling very complete. In the past, my shamanic teacher, Dakota, Dakota Earth Cloud Walker, had given me great advice for doing rituals like this, which I'd previously done for other healing. I used the month of December to process what had transpired between my friend and I, as I was still feeling a bit uneasy. I felt like his last message to me was both final, but also open to moving forward. And I had to ask myself though, what did I want with this friendship? Could I move forward again? I started processing why my trust issues with this friend started to come up for me shortly before and after that Friday uh, poker group. I wasn't completely sure why that was happening. I was talking to an energy healing colleague while this feeling occurred and she explained to me that it was all root stuff and that you're leveling up. So I began to ponder those remarks and realized I hadn't properly dealt with an incident that occurred 15 years prior. 15 years ago, this friend had mistakenly forwarded me an email conversation between a friend and a friend of his where they were talking bad about me and using the C word to describe me. I recall responding back saying, I don't think you meant to send this to me. That of course resulted in a big blow up between us. I recall telling him I needed space and time and I recall him incessantly responding to me, don't shut me out, don't shut me out, <laughs> which I find ironic today, ironic today because I was not afforded any grace in our recent falling out. I recall informing, if I recall him informing me it was because of my sarcastic humor that he and his partner didn't care for, which was fair and I didn't have issues with, but I recall informing him that it was his responsibility to inform me how he was feeling about any behavior that upset him. We decided to move forward with our friendship. But what I specifically recall about this time was it was his issues with me, not his forwarding his cruel email to me, that took precedence in this fallout, exactly what had just transpired between us. As I mentioned, I felt uneasy and something was weighing heavy on me during this processing that I couldn't figure out. I specifically recall on my morning hike asking higher source Please show me what it is I'm not seeing. What is it I need to see? The insight came the very next day on my afternoon walk. I felt, min uh, I realized the behavior my friend recently exhibited was the same exact behavior he exhibited 15 years ago during that fallout. I felt manipulated and gaslighted. I felt like he flipped the tables on me and emotionally hijacked me. The blame was placed on me so that he didn't have to deal with his behavior. 
in my attempts to move forward from that prior incident, I distinctly recall contacting him to go to lunch and I always received a no. I was playing softball on Sundays and normally went out to the Castro bars after games and a few times I would see him in the bars and um, my friend in a bar and what he'd do is he'd run and hide from me. Or I'd see him walking up Castro Street and he'd run and hide. He made no such attempts to move forward. The effort was all me. Except all the while, he had no problem coming into my home every two weeks for poker, which felt opportunistic. It was then I realized I was the one who allowed all this. I was the one who didn't confront him about any of his behavior or how I felt about his cruelty. I stuffed all that anger and resentment down for quite a few years and tried to move forward, which I eventually did. I settled for this unhealthy behavior. I mean, who does that? Who allows themselves to be treated that way by someone and then turns around and allows them come into their homes? I quickly learned that this was not only boundary issues for me, but, the feel, but feelings of low self-worth. My self-talk, self-talk is rarely bad, but it's the settling for the unhealthy behavior that is my issues, especially around boundaries. This was why all this was coming up for me now. This was the root stuff my colleague had mentioned. I felt I had to be honest with my friend about all this if we were ever going to move forward. Previously, I stuffed all those feelings down and unconsciously took on most of the blame, and I wasn't going to do that to myself again. I also needed to be honest with myself and not be afraid to bring this up, which I was feeling. But shortly after I realized I fell for the exact same behavior 15 years ago that was occurring now, feeling that my friend had emotionally hijacked and manipulated me, I also realized his actions didn't match his words, both 15 years ago and this time. When I realized all this and acknowledged it and acknowledged those feelings, I felt the overwhelming feeling or need to not move forward or work through anything more with this friend. I wanted to end this relationship. The trust felt completely broken. I played with that in my mind for a few days as as it's rare for me to make rush decisions. It pains me very deeply when I realize that I have, uh, when it's time to end with friendships. And I also had this overwhelming feeling that this way may be why this friend was in my life in the first place, to bring me to this awakening and healing, especially around my father. In those feelings, I was able to find gratitude for the moment and for the gift that and for the gift that occurred. It was time to level up. It was during this time where I saw another Instagram post that made complete sense to me. It stated, manipulation is when they blame you for your reaction to their disrespect. Gaslighting is when they refuse to be held accountable for it. Another aha moment for me. How often had I allowed people to treat me this way? Another great insight that happened during a conversation with a friend, I'd explained to her what just happened with my friend and how I bared my soul to my poker group. And she asked me, did any of these people contact you after poker to see how you were doing? I said, no, but one of the guys is fairly new and he's only been playing with us for a year. She stated, I don't care. These people come to your house every week and nobody's contacted to see how you're doing. These people are not your friends. Another gut check moment for me. A female female friend had been holding a lot of space for me during this fallout, really showing up for me. And I realized I was seeking out a lot of female energy both from female friends and from a few male friends who were able to express female energy. I needed that caretaking, that empathy, and that compassion. I'm most grateful for the love and compassion I received from these friends. And jumping back to my asking higher source to please show me what it is I'm not seeing and what it is I need to see, 
prayer. It was around this time one of my favorite meditation teachers on Insight Timer, Sakib Rizvi, who is now a friend, had been using this quote by Carl Jung in numerous of his lives. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. I seriously pondered that quote and took it into my being. That's how I started using the above prayer for myself, and it has worked. Sakib is an amazing meditation teacher and human being. His IT lives have helped me immensely in my awakening and healing journey since I found him in October of 2020. During 2022, I learned how deep my boundary issues were and how I rarely exhibited any healthy boundaries for myself. I read an Instagram post from boundary expert Terry Cole, author of Boundary Boss, that talked about being a settler. It was another insight that helped me figure out some of my behavior. Among many others, I had been listening to Terry's amazing podcast for quite a while too, which has lots of great insights and healing. I unconsciously learned that I had to settle with whatever behavior someone exhibited. I had to be the good boy and not have any feelings about the way people treated me and just somehow work it out and move forward. That's what good people do. It was quite amazing for me how all these insights occurred and especially when I asked, they showed up. Once you believe, the signs are everywhere. <laughs> Boy, did my guide show up for me big time. I started writing this blog on July 19th, 2023, and immediately after starting it, I started feeling triggered with some grief showing up. <clears throat> the next day, I decided to do yet another cord clearing energy sit on this friend. And shortly after the fallout in December, I had started doing cord clearing energy on myself and about five friendships that had ended. I still have more to do. During my studies of both energy healing and shamanism, I learned that it can take numerous sessions to release those energetic cords from others. It can also be deeply painful yet healing work. I also performed another shamanic ritual by writing their names on a piece of paper and burning and burying those hurt feelings. That too was a very cathartic healing for me. During my morning hike of that week, I again prayed and asked Source to show me what it is I need to see and what is it I'm not seeing. It again came the next day when I saw another Instagram post from Terry Cole stating, if you asserting a boundary blows up a relationship, that relationship was built on your self abandonment. Ding, ding, ding. When I read that, my entire body eased. How often throughout my life had I self-abandoned myself? I often thought most of my issues in life were from a feeling of low self-worth, but when I read that post about self-abandonment, it felt like a missing piece. My biggest fear had come true when I expressed to my friend how I was feeling. He did abandon me and our 20-year relationship but I didn't fall apart. I wasn't aware of it at the time, but I didn't self-abandon myself by speaking up for my truth to my friend. Instead, I leveled up and spoke up for myself. That's how you're able to heal these overwhelming feelings of abandonment. You tell yourself you are worthy. Your feelings are valid. You do have a right to bring up your feelings to people when you're feeling wronged. You can speak up for yourself. Sure, there may be painful ramifications from speaking up for yourself, but when you choose yourself first, the healing occurs. It will eventually become second nature to show up for yourself in this way. Instead of the overwhelming dread that may come along with speaking up for yourself. As Dr. Scott Lyons says, if someone can't show up for you, they are revealing their capacity and not a reflection of your worth. That was the overall feeling that I had with the last email from my friend. His reactions were not about me at all. 
The self-abandonment piece is also a way to release any feelings of residual anger and resentment towards the people in your life that you may f feel have wronged you. It releases them from your mind and puts the responsibility squarely on yourself and why you're engaging in these self-defeating habits. It also clears the way for forgiveness to enter, which I notice happening after this realization. Also, in all my years of therapy and exploring other modalities to heal myself, I don't ever recall anyone ever saying anything remotely close to the insights I've had around self-abandonment. I was able to get there mostly by myself, by creating that space within my energy field for these emotions and pain to come to the surface in order to heal. Over time, I think the self-abandonment realization will become the biggest lesson for me. It feels pretty big right now. I've known throughout most of my adult life that my abandonment issues is my core wound. That's one of the reasons I believe I came in this life to heal. I spent time in my early 20s and 30s trying to heal those wounds and feelings, mostly by attending Al-Anon and both individual therapy and group therapy and reading tons of self-help books. In my late 20s, after about seven years in Al-Anon, I decided to move on from those meetings and do more spiritual-based work. I started to intently study A Course in Miracles, which is an amazing spiritual belief system. During those times, I believe I learned to spiritually bypass a lot of my feelings because they were just too painful to deal with. And then perhaps around my late 30s into my early 40s, my thoughts became, I'm just going to have to learn to live with these feelings. It wasn't until these past few years during my energy healing and shamanism studies that these deep, deep feelings started to come up. Through my energy healing training, I learned how to track and clear those blockages within my energy field. It has been mainly my third, fourth, and fifth chakras where, I've, where these trapped emotions lay for me. I held most of those feelings in my gut and, experience, and I experience all the classic feelings of an adult child of an alcoholic, something I've always known. Once that energy was released from my body is when I was able to gain these incredible insights. It's quite amazing how it all happens. This is the meaning of self-healing, which is exactly what energy healing is. The person receiving energy healing from a practitioner like myself is the one who is doing the actual healing. I am the person who just runs the energy protocols and I am the conduit to higher source. The energy directly flows into your field, into the client. I also have experienced how this modality works much quicker than traditional talk therapy. This is not to say that talk therapy isn't valuable. It is. I found it, I found it a very valuable tool throughout my entire life. I've restored the balance and harmony to my energy field, thus resulting in healing within my physical body. I've noticed how my gut is healing, which still needs attention, but it is mainly being done nutritionally. But I'm not running to the restroom when I feel overwhelming feel, fear or nervousness. The anxiety I once felt has turned into meeting different experiences with neutrality. This was something I recently noticed by accident when I was watching the news. My overthinking has significantly decreased by reminding myself to stay in present moment awareness. I'm not feeling as much dread or a pit in my stomach if I feel the need to speak up for myself. I've also learned that a majority of my life I've reacted from the position of fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And I've witnessed, I've witnessed changes there as well. My nervous system has regulated itself as I particularly put a lot of attention into healing it. I'm walking away from people that don't see my worth and situations that feel unsafe. I feel calmer today than I have at any point in my life. I am healing at the level of mind, body, and soul. 
I can honestly say I've healed a lot of my abandonment issues the past two years through energy healing. A lot of it has come full circle and I've now been able to connect it all together. The fear of abandonment to, if I tell you how I feel, you'll leave me, to my people pleasing, to my feelings of low self-worth, to my lack of boundaries, to settling, all wrapped up leading to self-abandonment. This was how I was unconsciously showing up in the world and in all my relationships. I was longing for self-realization and transformation, despite this pain and suffering it took to get there, but it has all been completely worth it. I finally made myself my priority. It's not completely surprising to me, but I am somewhat shocked and saddened, of course, at how many of my friendships have ended. Most will tell you this will happen when you start to awaken, awaken as I have. But due to a lot of childhood bullying, I didn't have many friends growing up. So as an adult, I've always felt it important to keep a large circle of friends. But I'm no longer willing to shrink myself to fit the people I've outgrown. During this time, I saw an excerpt from Kyle York in her book titled Heartwork Therapy, which states, Thank you for rejecting me. Thank you for bailing on me. Thank you for not caring. Thank you for not being there when I needed you. Thank you for ghosting me. Thank you for not making an effort. Thank you for not treating me right. I needed to understand that your rejection was meant to show me that my worth is greater and that this redirection is meant to get me back on track, on the track that you took me off of. I feel that sums up my feelings. My abandonment issues and my friends have become my greatest teachers. Thank you for listening. Um, I want to quote the great Lao Tzu. If you haven't figured out, I'm a quote guy. Um, and Lao Tzu says, if you want to awaken all of humanity, then awaken all of yourself. If you want to eliminate all the suffering in the world, then eliminate all that is dark and negative in yourself. Truly, the greatest gift that you have to give the world is that of your own self-transformation. How beautiful is that? So again, thank you so much for listening. If this sparks any, triggers you in any way, and you can relate to any of these feelings or my behavior that I was showing up in the world, please reach out to me. Um, comment on this post. Um, I hope to be doing some more content around this to show you more about energy healing and how this can show it show up for us and um, so yeah that's it so I thank you so much I hope that you have a fabulous day namaste